Welcome to Inside Number 23, my podcast which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible. <laughs> my name is Katie and you can find me everywhere on all of the social medias as Miss Lavelli. I'm most active on Instagram though. You can also find the Ravelry group for the podcast by searching Inside Number 23 on the groups tab in Ravelry. That's where I post my show notes as well as putting them down below and if you join the group you're going to be amongst some really really lovely happy special people whom I adore. I just want to say a, a really really big welcome to any new viewers this week. There have been quite a few of you um, over the last several days so hello and obviously a big hi and welcome back to all of my long-term viewers. I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire which is just north of London in the UK where I live with my husband Emrys and our lovely little pug Poochie Rolly and yeah I'm just really really happy to be here with you this week. Um, I've been a little under the weather for the past week so if you can hear it in my voice I really apologise. I've tried my best to kind of clear the pipes as it were before we started filming but I'll do my best to edit around any snuffling or sniffling that may interfere with your viewing pleasure. So yeah you guys, can you believe it's less than a week till Christmas? Because I can't, I'm really quite overwhelmed with the fact that we don't have very much time left at all before Christmas and then it's going to be New Year's and then it's going to be 2017 and I think it's going to be a really really good year. Yeah, generally very excited um, that Christmas is coming so soon and I'm relatively on top of all my Christmas planning so far so fingers crossed I won't get too stressed in the lead up to it. Um, I wanted to start off with a little bit of administrative stuff, get that out of the way. I have a lot of fun things to share with you this week, I'm really excited to do that but Vlogmas has been happening over the past month. I've been uploading a daily vlog every day even when I've been um, <laughs> really not in the mood because it's been quite under the weather shall we say but um I love vlogging it's really really good fun and thank you for all of the positive responses that you've given me about vlogmas this year I really appreciate it and um that will be continuing up until Christmas so so yeah you've got some videos coming so now is as good a time as any to subscribe to the channel just so that you're kept up to date as when there are new videos on here I have one more bit of news before we get started with all of the crafty goodness and that is something that you guys have been asking me about for the um, the last couple of weeks and I wanted to give you a definitive answer about it and that is about the Andy sat along. Um, as I was talking about earlier this year we will be having a knit along with the podcast to do with the incredible Andy Satterland who I absolutely adore. She is an incredible knitwear designer and I'm very very excited to be um, hosting our first ever Andy sat along. This is going to be starting in January so from January 1st and going all the way through into the end of March so you have three months for this knit along. And and that end date is relatively flexible. If we think that we need more time, we can extend it. So don't panic too much. But basically the idea of this knit along is that we will all, or at least anyone who wants to get involved, will be knitting one of Andy's um, sweaters or cardigans. She does do a lot of patterns. If you go onto her Ravelry page, she has accessories and that type of thing. But this is specifically for her garments. So her sweaters and cardigans. And this is just basically us, reveling in the amazingness that is Andy Satterland and all of us together um, knitting something fabulous to wear in the new year. I feel like it's a very very good time to start that. Um, no whips will be allowed for this knit along and um, I'm actually kind of cutting off my nose to spite my face with that because I already have an Andy Satterland project on the needles but this is specifically for new cast-ons only. Um, so new projects, lovely new things, new patterns, and just go go nuts. I'm going to link Andy's um, kind of designer Ravelry page in the show notes. Just to take a look at all of her designs because she is so incredible. I can guarantee that you will find something that you love. I know that a lot of you were interested in knitting a chuck sweater, so now is a good time to get one of those on the needles. Maybe I'll knit another one of those, but there are so many of her cardigans that I love, would love 
to cast on. So I'm going to create a um, page in the Ravelry group for this knit along. Um, I just wanted to let you know now so that you have time to start picking out yarn or planning for yarn or possibly getting ready for yarn purchases in January sales, you never know, and just working out whether or not you want to get involved. But I really, really hope you do and I'm very, very excited um, to cast on my own project. I've got a couple of ideas as to the patterns that I'll be using but no definitive plans just yet but yes check out the Ravelry group for more information and I genuinely just cannot wait to do this cow with you guys it's going to be amazing. I do have another cal in the works, a very exciting cal, but I will be making a proper announcement, a big announcement about that cal. Um, and in between kind of Christmas and New Year time, there'll be a specific video all about that cal, but it's something that a lot of you have been asking to do for quite some time, and it's kind of harking back to the cow that started it all on this channel about a year ago. It's coming up to the anniversary of that cow, so bear that in mind. But like I said, there'll be a special video all about that between Christmas and New Year, so just keep your eyes peeled. Okay then, with all of that administrative stuff out of the way, let's get on with the crafty goodness, shall we? I'm going to start off this week with a really quick what am I wearing, because I am wearing a handmade outfit today. My hat, unfortunately, is not handmade. It is vintage though, so I really enjoy it. Nice red hat, quite festive, but the rest of my outfit is 100% handmade. I am, of course, wearing my featherweight cardigan, in the Ashley Crumb colourway um, from Vool & Vine Yarns. This is her Volca Base, which is an MCN blend. You've seen it a lot of times before, but I absolutely love this cardigan. It's definitely up there in terms of being one of my favourite projects that I have made this year. And of course, my old favourite. This is one of my um, Robe Bleuet dresses um, from Deer & Doe. It's my foxy lady dress that I made for my birthday this year. And I am still utterly in love with this dress, you guys. I love it so much. I'm planning a couple of these for the new year just because I love them. I live in them all the time. And I'm thinking of trying to make a kind of longer sleeved version of this as well. Moving on to what's on my needles. I have some really, really fun knitting to share with you this week, you guys. If you've been watching my Vlogmas, you'll know that earlier this week, what I said was I wanted this week to be the week of completing things and really working on some specific projects um, because I want to really get as much off the needles as I possibly can before the new year just so I can kind of start afresh. It's unrealistic to think I'll get everything that's on my needles finished but at least have a good chunk taken out of them will just make me feel a little less guilty when I start casting on new things in the new year because we all know that's going to happen. I mean Christmas presents, I don't know about you but I'm anticipating yarn so <laughs> I know I'm going to want to cast that on right away but anyway I do have I'm happy to say a finished object this week very very excited about this because it is another addition to my box of socks it's my Yule Ball socks they're finished and I absolutely love them so this yarn is um, London House Yarns I absolutely love London House Yarns and their self-striping colourways in particular just make my heart happy and this is the Yule Ball colourway which is inspired by Harry Potter and obviously it's Christmas because you, the Yule Ball happens at kind of Christmas time so these are very festive and I do intend to wear these on Christmas Day. I'm very very excited about that but these were really special um, for me in several ways. First of all these were my first ever pair of two at a time socks you guys and I am so happy that I have started knitting socks like this. I genuinely want to cast on all the two at a time socks now and um, I already have lots of plans for um, new pairs of two at a time vanilla socks. I just love them, I absolutely adore them and I'm really going to miss working on them. It's bad because I do have lots of other things on the needles that I want to get finished in the meantime but all I can think of now is casting on another pair of two at a time vanilla socks. It's very dangerous, it's dangerous learning new techniques guys because you get addicted but in terms of the details of these socks I used um, Judy's Magic Cast On and I did a lovely rounded toe on these. I love a rounded toe on my socks, um, makes me very very happy. Um, an end. They are sewn in but I haven't blocked these yet so I haven't cut the ends off before I've blocked them. 
I then it, um, went up to 56 stitches, which really is my ideal amount of stitches for socks. Um, and I put in, as I said, two fish lips kiss heels. I then knitted up the leg of my socks and I did 20 rounds of one by one twisted rib, which is my cuff of choice. I absolutely love it. And there they are all finished and ready for Christmas and ready to go into the box of socks. And if I finish my other two pairs of socks, I will have 12 pairs because I know that I said I needed another pair of socks last week in order to get up to um, my total of 12 either last week or the week before when I was showing you my socks, I actually found another pair of socks that I'd knitted this year. I knitted a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks that had been in the wash and I'd completely forgotten about them. So if I, with these, plus the other two pairs that I have on my needles, if I can finish those by the end of December, job done. 12 pairs of socks this year. So very, very excited. And I need some more London House yarns in my life. I do have some more skeins of her yarn in the stash, but I want all of her Harry Potter colorways. She does incredible colorways and I just love them. And these make me happy. And now I'm sock twins with Nessa of the Kiltercraft podcast as well. So yay, Nessa, <laughs> we have identical socks. Happy days. So no more finished objects, but I do have three works in progress that I'm gonna be sharing with you this week. All of these you have seen before, but some of them, oh, just reaching off screen, that was really elegant, wasn't it? Um, some of them have been a little bit MIA the past couple of weeks. First up, living in my pug bag, made by lovely Mel. Thank you so much, Mel. I still, this is one of my favorite, favorite bags of all time. I have been working the last couple of days on my August mittens. Remember these, you guys? Oh. There's a rolly hair. Get that off there. Remember these beauties? I love these mittens. This is a pattern by Kate Gagnon Osborne and I've already completed the first mitten. I actually have that in here as well. There's mitten number one and this is mitten number two. So as you can see, I'm already over halfway done with the second mitten. I can't tell you how much I love this project. It's one of those things that I haven't worked on really for for about a week or so and it wasn't number one on my priority list in terms of, of working on it because I was so into working on my socks. But the minute that I start working on this, I just get so happy. These cables are just divine. Oh, they're amazing. And the back is, oops. The back is this incredible pattern and every single row is different. Um, it can get a little frustrating because it's fully charted. It's, it's quite complicated to work on. You can't just kind of sit and turn your brain off when you're working on these, but I find it really, really thrilling that every row is kind of different and I love seeing this grow and they grow really quickly because they're only little mittens and I just want these finished. This is my goal is to have these finished by Christmas so that I can wear them when we take Rolly out for his walks on Christmas day. The yarn that I'm using for this is John Arvin Textiles. This is their Knit by Numbers um, yarn. This is a the four ply version. I believe it's shade 74. And on the camera, it's actually coming out a lot darker than it is. It's a really rich burgundy kind of wine color. And I love it. I'm working on this using my interchangeable high, higher sharps. These are 2.75 millimeter. And can I just talk about how obsessed I am with high, higher sharps? I used them for my Yule Ball socks. I used a one meter, um, 2.25 um, millimeter needle for my Yule Ball two at a time socks. I'm using them, my interchangeable set for these mittens. And I also have another set that I'm using on my Advent socks, which I'll be showing you in a little bit, but I just love them. They're by far my favorite needle. I feel that I've tried enough needles now to be able to definitively say that the higher, higher sharps are my favorite. I'm hoping that I'm gonna get these mittens cast off in the next couple of days. That would just be fantastic. But I really don't think it will take me long because when I sit and work on them, I can't put them down for at least a couple of hours. I find them so addictive. They're basically, for me, the knitting version of Pringles because I can't stop. <laughs> 
Um, my next work in progress, I just, I just love all of these projects. I can't tell you how happy they're all making me. Um, I've been working on my Mercury socks. So again, I have one finished. I do have a hoe and this yarn, oh, I'm so lucky to have such beautiful yarn to play with. Um, this is Nora George. This was the toffee apple set, um, the sock set. So it came with this lovely um, kind of natural but speckled toffee apple color. It's just perfect with this lovely sour apple green as the contrast, which I used for the cuff, heel and toe on this. But I have been working very hard on the actual sock, the second sock, if I could speak. And I'm getting to the point where I'm adding in my second heel. It's so addictive, honestly. You can just, you just know why this is making the rounds um, of all of the knitting podcasts, because it's beautiful. It's so simple as well. I find that it is becoming more of a brainless knit, something really just mindless and relaxing that I can, can totally just um, enjoy without thinking about it too much because it's very intuitive and once you've knitted the pattern a couple of times you will remember it. So this is how far I am with the second sock. I have one more work in progress to share with you and surprise surprise it's another pair of socks and again this is a pair of socks that I have shared with you quite a lot over the past several weeks because I'm obsessed with them and these are my advent calendar socks. So I purchased an advent calendar of yarn from the incredible Kate Celine. I'm a huge fan of everything she does. I think she is incredible. Um, and I must admit guys, I know when I last spoke to you about these socks, I said that I'd opened a couple of days up early and I'd been a bit cheeky. I went kind of as extreme as you can possibly go with this advent calendar because <laughs> I went all the way up to the 25th. I've opened all of them. I've seen all of the colours. I just couldn't help myself. And because I did that, I decided that it was only fair for me to knit almost all of the colours. I have knit in 21 different colours into these socks now. Aren't they incredible? I just can't even... I can't even, they make me so happy. I'm knitting these consecutively, um, so I'm not knitting them two at a time, I'm just knitting them each on its individual cable. I um, have just been working on 56 stitches, but I've been trying them on as I go, and I've got to the point now where I do want to do um, a couple of increases um, on the rounds with the next colour, just because it's getting up into calf territory, where the more meaty part of my leg is, and, and so just for comfort, I want a little bit more space. So I'm gonna um, add in a couple of um, stitches for the next round, but I love these. I am desperate for them to be finished for Christmas Eve so that I can wear them when we're at my parents' house on Christmas Eve night. Um, we all have dinner together and we play games and we just hang out and it's gonna be really, really lovely. And I want to be able to, to put on my nice warm advent socks, my knee high socks and just be all snuggly and comfortable. And, and yeah, I love these. And these will be pair number 12 of my box of socks when they are complete. Although there's so much yarn in these, to be honest, I think they'd count for at least two pairs because they're going to be huge. <laughs> Look at them. They're like, they, they are like Christmas stockings as opposed to, to tights, but I can't tell you how happy I am that I went with, with Kate and bought her advent calendar because you can just see the amount of beautiful colours in here and each one of them is different and really special and these just make me happy when I work on them, when I look at them. I love them. I love them so much and I will definitely, definitely, definitely be um, knitting another pair next year. This may be a new tradition for me, a long pair of socks every advent. So that's everything that I have on my needles this week, you guys. Um, I feel like I've been working really hard. I'm really pleased with all of the progress I've made with my knitted projects. But for my next segment of the podcast, we're moving into lovely, lovely things territory. I have some stash enhancements to talk to you about. Just a couple of little things. Um, the first one is a relatively simple um, 
addition, but it's to go with something that I received in Owl Post recently. Um, you may or may not remember that lovely Marie Lynn um, from Purple Lanes sent me two skeins of yarn. Um, she sent me the Sauvage skein, which is gorgeous, um, which I have earmarked for a pair of very special socks. I'm very excited about that. But the other skein that she sent me was this, which is, um, and again, apologies for my pronunciation, I believe it's Enchanceleuse, which means enchantress in French. And I was talking about last week how this is so special and so beautiful that I really wanted to be able to wear it near my face as opposed to just on my feet for socks. Um, so, my mum and I um, yesterday went to London to go and see the Red Shoes. I have a vlog about it in Vlogmas, so you should definitely go and check that out. But we also made a stop at Loop. My mummy very, very generously, hi mum, if you're watching, um, purchased me some Christmas presents because, you know, we were in the area and she knows exactly what I want if I go, oh, look at the yarny things. <laughs> um, but I also wanted to pick up some yarn to work with this so that I could make a brioche shawl. I am pretty sure that the, um, I'm going to be going with a pattern by Andrea Mowry for this. It's originally a DK weight shawl, but I don't think it will matter being fingering weight. I think I'll just add some increases. I think I'll be able to make it work, but I have been dying to do a bit more brioche and I just thought that this, with all of its beautiful multi-colours, would just need something, something very plain to, to be its buddy if I was going to go with brioche. So as I was searching around Loop for the perfect partner for my lovely Purple Lanes yarn, I stumbled across some yarn that I've always wanted to use but I have never used, and that is Madeline Tosh yarn. Uh, this is the Tosh Sock 100% Merino, and this is in the paper colourway. And I just thought these two together look amazing. It really just, this colour, complements every single tone in the, the purple lane skein that I have. You can see there's a little bit of natural in there that it just picks up, but see how beautiful it looks with the reds and the burgundies and with the blues and with the purples. It was just a match made in heaven. Plus, this is so squishy and gorgeous and I've never used Tosh Sock before. I've never used any Madeline Tosh yarn um, before. So I thought this is gonna be a beautiful, brioche shawl that I will be casting on in the new year. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be gorgeous. So I had to show you that even though it's a little bit, I suppose it's a little bit boring on its own, you know, it's not as exciting as say this one, but together, together they're just going to be divine and I am really, really excited to cast that on, hopefully in the near future. I have one more stash enhancement to share with you and this is something I've already shared on Vlogmas so bear with me if you've seen it already and it's a bit frustrating because it's arrived at a time where I really don't have the time to use it for what I want to use it for and it's a fabric purchase. Right at the beginning of November I was considering making myself a dress for Christmas. I do tend to like to make outfits for myself for special occasions, hence my birthday dress, this one here. Um, and I thought a Christmas dress, a really kitschy, cute Christmas dress would be a really fun thing to make. I found some fabric online that was just ridiculous and I ordered it at the beginning of November. And it arrived just this week, with like a week before Christmas is when it arrived. And I should have known better, it was coming quite a long distance, it was coming from Canada, but I really didn't anticipate it to take as long as it did. And now I'm frustrated because I love it and I want to make it into a dress, but I genuinely don't think I'm gonna have time at this point. Which is fine because it will just wait until next year, but oh, the frustration of it. But I thought I would share it with you anyway, and that is this fabric. <laughs> This is my Christmas kitten fabric, which is so ridiculously over the top and kitsch. I can't even, I can't even tell you. It's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it is like Christmas threw up on this fabric. <laughs> I love it. It makes me so happy. But the disappointing thing is, is that I really don't want 
to put the pressure on myself of making a dress out of this at this point just because it's less than a week till Christmas guys and I don't want to rush this and make it into a botched job but it's here there's a possibility it might be made into a dress by Christmas but the likelihood of that happening is just it's just probably not going to happen is it but I wanted to share it with you anyway for all of those of you who also enjoy a bit of Christmas kitsch and um just kittens kittens in hats with <laughs> mistletoe and stars and ribbons and holly I want to make this so much they're just adorable that's all of my stash enhancements but I do have a little bit of owl post as well those beautifully magical owls came and paid me a visit with a really really lovely treat um from the lovely lovely Catherine of Crafternoon treats. <laughs> she got in touch with me and asked if she could send me some of her yarn and I of course said absolutely that sounds wonderful but there's something very very special about what Catherine does with her company with Crafternoon treats. This yarn that she has sent me is ethically produced um, British wool and I'm just going to read exactly what this says this yarn is dyed in small batches using professional acid dyes, um, milling dyes manufactured in Yorkshire. Uh, your yarn is a blend of 95% Romney lamb's wool from one farm in the Ch Cheddar Gorge in Somerset and 5% Shetland from one farm near Inverness in Scotland. Small batches of fleece are washed carded and spun at my local mill and I hand dye each skein individually using professional acid dyes. I dye colourways that inspire me and that will suit many different crochet and knitting projects. How incredible is that? Literally, Catherine knows the mill where this yarn is spun. She knows exactly where the fleeces came from. She knows everything about everything that went into this yarn and it's all produced incredibly ethically in Britain and it just makes me happy on so many levels. So you can already tell from these colours that I'm absolutely going to love this yarn. I think it is beautiful. The colourway is called Autumn's Last Loveliest Smile. I love it so much. It's it's all the colours that I absolutely adore with Autumn. Now, because of the way that this yarn has been um, kind of put together, it's a lot more rustic than a lot of the kind of 100% merinos blends that you get out there. But I think maybe directly against the skin, it may be a little uncomfortable, but I think it would make a really, really nice um, set of kind of mittens like on your hands I don't think it would be too itchy I also think it would make really good socks nice hard wearing socks and oh it smells so good I don't know what you wash your yarn in Catherine but it's just so gorgeous and fresh and lovely and it's everything that I love about yarn in addition to um, the yarn she also added in some sleep tea by twining she also sent me a selection of progress keepers several of which are kind of Christmas themed I absolutely love this yarn um, so check her out it's craftanoontreats.com and it's hand dyed ethically produced British wool I'm really excited to be able to try this out and it's very different from a lot of yarn that I'm used to using but I'm just genuinely really really excited to, to try it out and see see how it feels see how it plays see how it behaves and just makes me so happy. The most beautiful colours in the world, so thank you so much. <laughs> Before we head on to our final segment, General Waffle, I do have one more segment for you this week, and that is reviewing the situation. I have a really, really lovely review for you this week. I was lucky enough this week to be sent the newest copy of Stranded Magazine, the cold weather edition of 2016 to review and I'm so so happy to have been sent this magazine again. You may recall that I did a review on the mild weather edition a little bit um, further back in the year and like I said 
very, very happy to be sent this edition as well. I'm gonna state my biases straight away. Um, I'm a big fan of Stranded Magazine. I loved the Mild Weather edition that they produced this year. I'm also a huge fan of two of the main kind of, uh, the main ladies behind it, two of them. One is Andy Satterland, Enough said, you know, I'm hosting a knit along specifically for her patterns. I'm a huge, huge fan of her work. I think she is wonderful, but also lovely Erin Bennell, who sent me the magazine and contacted me in the first place about reviewing Stranded. She's an incredible designer as well, but she also hosts the um, Double Knit Audio podcast, which I'm a big fan of too. And in general, I think she is great. So I am already very, very pro um, Stranded and the team <laughs> behind Stranded. I think that it's it's great, it really excites me, and I'm very excited to share with you this latest edition of the magazine. The difference with the cold weather issue um, in comparison to the editions that I have seen previously is that this focuses on all natural undyed yarns, and that's just really exciting because we live in a world where acid dyes are a plenty, and you know that I love all of that kind of stuff. I love bright colours, I love things that um, make a statement, but sometimes it's really nice to go back to um, to our roots and really look at the the natural fibre that we're using and really appreciate it for just how beautiful it is even before we do anything fancy with it. Um, so that's really what the focus of the cold weather issue is. It's all about kind of rustic natural yarns. So in there you have an actual rustic yarn review which involves swatches both um, before blocking and after blocking. There's also an interview with a shearer which I found incredibly interesting and I feel that the main message is looking at that yarn, where it's coming from and really understanding the whole process of where our beautiful fibres come from because a lot of the time we kind of take it for granted and that's not necessarily the best way to be. So I found that whole aspect of the magazine really, really fascinating. In addition to some incredible patterns, um, Strand Magazine always likes to give you that little bit more. There are some really, really fun things included in the magazine this time. There are tutorials. Um, the thing I love about the tutorials in Stranded Magazine is that they are specific to some of the patterns that are included. Um, this was all about I-cord, so it was I-cord bind off and also I-cord buttonholes, which was great. There was a lovely project bag pattern, a drawstring project bag, which I really, really want to make. I have never made a drawstring project bag and this has really, really tempted me. I find the tutorials in Stranded are always very clear and have great photos throughout and I really appreciate how how good they are and how nicely laid out. They also tend to have a little kind of foodie drink treat and this time it was homemade ginger syrup which just sounded incredible and I really, really, really want some. Um, particularly with the cold that's going on here, I think a bit of ginger syrup would probably do, my, do me good. So watch this space, I might be making some of that in the near future. But what we're really here to talk about is of course the patterns, the main action of the magazine although there is so much more going out in this magazine um, than patterns, but the patterns are really the fun bit, aren't they? So let me talk you through what they have included in this edition of Stranded. Starting off is Taslina, which is a sock pattern by lovely Erin Bunnell. She wrote a sock pattern for the last edition and this one is just as scrumptious. It's a sock weight kind of lace pattern and I really, really love it. It's very pretty and I could imagine having a pair of these socks to snuggle up in the cold wearing them. I think that they are gorgeous. They always have such lovely garments in Stranded and this time is no exception. Um, the first sweater that's included in the patterns is called Skywood. It is a huge bulky weight sweater and it's designed by Ruth Garcia Alcantad. It is gorgeous. It's very simple but it's the type of thing that I know that I would wear all the time in winter. It was a definite favourite for me, which is quite surprising because I'm very much kind of a fingering weight, maybe double knit weight kind of girl. At a pinch, I'll push up to worsted, but bulky is just not my kind of scene at all. But this jumper just looked so ridiculously warm and snuggly, and I know it would knit up so quickly. So I'm very, very tempted by it, actually. 
Um, there is a shawl included that's called Warlow. It's by Caitlin French. Um, it's designed so that you can button it um, along one side. So you can either wear it as a shawl, kind of scarf shawl, or you can wear it as a poncho. It's a very thick yarn, um, worsted weight, like I said, but it's quite an open texture, quite lacy. It wasn't my favourite of the patterns, I must admit. I do think it looks beautiful and for the right type of person it would look great. I just couldn't picture myself wearing it. But I think that the design elements of it are very, very clever and I like that you can wear it in a couple of different ways and style it differently. I found that very interesting. Next up was the Andy Satterland pattern, which I was very excited to see because I'd already seen a preview of this on Instagram and you guys, I was not disappointed. It's called Backcomb and it is this incredible worsted weight cardigan that involves stranded colour work, that involves mountains, little skiing people and snowflakes. It is the perfect Christmas cardigan. I absolutely adored it. You all know that I'm a fan of Andy and her work anyway, but this is really something special, particularly for anyone who um, enjoys kind of vintage patterns in general. This is just a classic, a real classic, and I love it. There are three more patterns included in the magazine, all of which are accessories. The first one is called Nebeska, and it's by Noriko Ho, and she actually is the beautiful model who is also included in all of the photos in the magazine, and she looks stunning in everything. The first of her patterns, because she actually has two, is a muff with thrums. So basically it uses a combination of two-ply yarn and roving to create this really squishy, beautiful looking muff. Again, I don't think that I would make this myself. I don't think I would be able to find it practical, but I love it. I think it's so clever. And I've seen a lot of kind of knitted and crochet muff patterns in the past. This is so much more appealing than any of those because of how warm and snuggly it looks because of the thrums created with the roving. I think it's really clever. I think it's very feminine. I love the fact that it has a little strap that goes around your arm. So if you're not wearing it, you can kind of have it hanging there like a little bag. Bag. It's beautiful. The um, second of Noriko's patterns is again one of my favourites. It's called the Maclure hat and it's kind of a hood hat and I'm obsessed with it. This hat is genuinely everything that I would want a winter hat to be. I think it is so cute. I could see it in loads of different colours. I think it would make a really, really lovely gift for people. It's just simple, but it's very unique and very special. And I think that it would just, I think it just looks really cool. I think that if you wore this hat, people would think that you look cool. So yeah, that's why I want one. I want to look cool in this hat. <laughs> There's one more pattern um, in Stranded magazine. It's another accessory. It's by Lee Meredith and it's called Stinson. And it's convertible mittens pattern. Again, this is in a heavier weight. It's in worsted weight. And it's kind of the, you, you see these kind of mittens a lot being sold on the high street. You have little kind of fingerless mittens with a flap that goes over the top. This is the same kind of concept. It's just a little bit more, I, I can't really ex describe it properly. It's almost like a little blanket for your fingers. It looks adorable. I think it's very clever in the way that it goes together. It looks super, super warm. And it's just, it is a very successful pattern. You may be able to tell from my very enthusiastic tone from talking about this magazine that once again, I am incredibly impressed with Stranded Magazine. It's genuinely, I think, of all of the magazines that I've seen over the past year, I think it's my favourite knitting magazine. I think that it involves so much more than just knitting patterns. The knitting patterns themselves are spectacular, but it's just really, really lovely. And I think that the collaboration that these ladies have going is, is clearly doing something special. So congratulations, you guys. Again, I think you've done something fantastic. And yeah, I'm just really, really, really excited to see everything that you're going to be doing next year because I think it's just going to be superb. Let me know guys what you think about Stranded Magazine. Take a look at the link that I'm going to include in the notes to the patterns included. Let me know what you think. What's your favourite one? You should really just head out and get a copy of this magazine and subscribe because this is an incredibly talented group of ladies and this magazine is really something special. So yeah, two big thumbs up from me. 
So that's pretty much everything you guys and it's probably a good thing because the sun has definitely set outside. It's setting so much earlier than I'm used to and I'm desperately trying to get this, this done whilst I still have natural light but unfortunately it's all electronic now so apologies if the lighting has gone slightly skew with during the end of this episode. Um, I have a slightly special general waffle segment this week. It is going to be another film review, including my gorgeous husband, Emrys. Um, we pre-recorded this segment of the podcast, so I'm going to hand you over to them in a different time, and a different place. From me, I love you all. I'll see you all soon, but I'm going to hand you over to Katie and Emrys for a little bit of movie chat and general waffling. Ooh. Hello, lovely friends, and welcome back to General Waffle. General Waffle. That's Emrys' favourite part of the podcast ever in the whole world, isn't it? It is my favourite. It is his favourite. <laughs> We're joined by Emrys again, yay! I know you love it when he comes on the podcast, um, but he has been featuring quite heavily on the channel recently because of Vlogmas. This week we are going to be doing a movie review for you, a little catch up on the movies that we've been seeing over the past kind of a month and a half, I is would say. Is it four say. movies or five movies? Four movies four that movies. we have seen. So why don't we just jump right in for movies? movie number What's the one. First one. The first movie that we saw um, <clears throat> was a little movie called Allied, starring Mr. Brad Pitt. Let's, let's, before, I mean, we should have really said this before we even started. There will be spoilers, not massive spoilers. We don't do massive spoilers on these little mini reviews, but we do do mini spoilers. So, if you saw the trailer for this film, we're going to give you the same level of spoilers that you got from that. So, yeah. Allied, <clears throat> Allied. <There> you <laughs> All right, yeah. 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 Uh, it stars Brad Pitt and Marianne Coutillard. Who's lovely. Who's Isn't brilliant. She, lovely? she is lovely. Mm -hmm. They are working together undercover um, to, like this, just in case you didn't understand what undercover. that word meant. Um, to They're um, undercover lovers. To spy on <laughs> and uh, assassinate a member of the other side. The Nazi party. Yeah. And um, they end up falling in love. Mm -hmm. And then her legitimacy of who she says she is and her motives and her intentions are brought into question. Yeah, and it's very, um, it suddenly went very foils war with the yeah. kind of yeah. going into these offices that are like, in like what look like a bunker mm. and they're all like, oh yes, we're a little bit concerned that your wife is a Nazi sympathizer. And that's how they talk in these guys. <laughs> it, it was really fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it, it was an entertaining film, however, I am a huge fan of period dramas in general. I'm utterly obsessed with them. I mean, it goes with my aesthetic entirely. I love anything kind of 40s and 50s. To be honest, I don't feel that it did anything different and it didn't do anything particularly exciting. And I pretty much guessed exactly how the film was going to end mm -hmm. within, I would say about half an hour yeah. or so. I'd pretty much predicted what was going to happen. <coughs> Brad Pitt is okay in it. Um, he his character is quite kind of quiet and kind of maybe socially inept. Bit Brad Pitt, basically. And he's yeah, so <laughs> he's quite well suited to it. Let's just say. Yeah, yeah. I. I would say it's worth seeing if you enjoy that kind of film, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's anything special, and no. I probably wouldn't watch it again. What, what score would you give it out of five? I'd give it two. Yeah, I'd give it two as well. Yeah, two stars. Two stars. And what was the next film that we went to see? You know, because I hated it. Oh. <laughs> the next film we went to see was Marvel's Doctor Strange. It wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. Remember when Marvel was really, really good <sighs> and like so much better than DC? I Even really, Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. couldn't save this movie. But I, th I really felt like he was a sellout in this film. I said this because I was discussing this movie with a friend of mine at work who's a very, very big film buff and also a big comic book film buff. And he, he, he enjoyed Doctor Strange and I said, the problem is, is that Marvel has done some incredible things in the past, as has DC, to be honest. Like, in, in terms of comic book films, we've come a long way in the last 10 years. I genuinely feel if this film came out 10 years ago, we'd, we'd be like, ooh, this is interesting and this is different. But when you're comparing it to films like Inception, which is basically a very similar concept, but done ultimately better and so much more 
classy in the way that it's delivered this just doesn't compare but yeah and i said to emrys you can tell that a film is bad when the best character on it is a cape that sums up that movie mm -hmm. how many would you give it out of five? Zero. <laughs> i'm not even giving it one star i genuinely fit i want my life back the time that i was watching that movie okay i'm gonna give it one mm -hmm. i don't think it's a zero film that's like the worst film that I've all right i'll give it a half there you go. Half a star. One and a half stars total out of ten. Not great. <laughs> what was the third film that we went? The third film that we <clears> saw <throat> was ultimately better than both the first two films that we'd seen. What was it? Was it Moana? <laughs> it was Moana! Moana! Uh, Moana is about the daughter of a uh, chieftain, chieftain uh, in Polynesia. Uh, Polynesia. <laughs> All right. I love it so much. <laughs> Sorry. Who is brought up to become the new chieftain of the island that they live on. Everyone lives and stays on the island. And they don't they? leave. They don't leave the island ever. Basically, she ends up having to leave the island. She has to go to the demigod Maui. He's played by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm -hmm. They uh, have to go on a mission. They have to go on a mission together. To, to make things better. To fix a problem that was made uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The music is written by... Well, not the music, the songs. The songs are written by Lin-Manuel Miranda of Hamilton fame. Uh, need I say more? Um, for me, <laughs> this film, the, the message of this film is so positive, and it's so positive to see um, a strong female character whose storyline does not in any way centre around uh, romance. romance or... I mean, I guess it centres around a man in the sense she needs to find this man. But but, but she she is the hero of her own story, yes. I think is the amazing thing about it. And she she doesn't, it's not about I'm following my heart mm. because I need to have a boyfriend in order to be happy. It's, mm. it's I love my family, I love my people, mm. I'm finding out about myself. And I just, I found it incredibly overwhelming. It made me cry about four times. Mm. It's incredibly positive, and then layer on some fantastic songs written by Lynn manuel Miranda, it just takes it to another level. I genuinely was sat in the cinema, and the hairs on my arms were standing up, mm. and on the back of my neck, and I had goosebumps, like physical mm. goosebumps on my arms, because of just how incredible this, and emotive the music was. Mm. And then, of course, you've got Dwayne The Rock Johnson sings a song, and he was amazing. Yeah, it's called You're Welcome. You're Welcome. <laughs> there you go. A little, little I snippet. love it. <laughs> Where does this sit in your sort of high ranking of Disney films? It's definitely top ten. Yeah. It might even be top five at yeah. this point. I think if it was top five, it'd be five, but yeah. it'd be in there. Go see Moana, guys. It's really good. What if you're not you, sure, go and see it. it. I'm going to give it four and a half. Out of five, and you're gonna give it five. That's five. a pretty good score, guys. I think that might be the highest scoring film we've seen yet that yeah. we've reviewed. Moana. Go see it. Go and see it. Yeah. The one thing I would say is mm. two or three of the songs do sound very similar to songs from Hamilton. Like to the point where you can, you sing, can them sing them at the same time <laughs> and they work. So yeah. I don't know if anyone's got that far yet, but um, I would love to Do see some mashup. Mash up. Maybe we'll make Moana, that happen. Moana, Moana, Hamilton that, mash that'll up. Be, uh, that'll be your breakout moment. Yeah. Not, not that you need it with all the subscribers you have. But that'll be when we go viral. Yeah. Moana, Hamilton, mash up. Mash up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've got one more film to talk about. And if you've been watching Vlogmas, you're going to know because you're going to have seen that we went to a midnight showing of a particular film. Oh, I wonder what Emrys is doing. Is he having a stretch in the background there? Is he just, just stretching just, myself just, right just out there. Stretching. You know. <laughs> what film did we go and see, baby? We saw Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Yay! The story is of a group of rebels who um, band together to steal the plans to the Death Star which comes right out the opening crawl uh, in A New Hope, the first ever Star Wars film. Um, yeah. and, and this film takes us right up to that moment uh, where A New Hope begins. So, when we went to the midnight showing of Star Wars... When the film started, I was tired. At the end of the film, I was very awake as I had enjoyed the film so much. If you looked over at Katie while the film was on, you would see she was asleep for most of it. I so wasn't I would say, asleep! I would say it's important that you understand that she has missed okay. quite large chunks of this film I, as she was I asleep. I was not asleep for the majority of this film. <laughs> I was sitting like this. 
watching through very small eyes and I must admit I was not in the mood for going to a midnight showing of this film. <laughs> I must admit there were parts of the film that I didn't see because I was asleep and the majority of the rest of the film I was pretty much the grumpy puss kind of being like I was comfy at home and now I'm in the cinema and it's really loud and it's bright and I want to go to sleep. Uh, so I absolutely loved it. Um... I think one of the, the criticisms that Katie will talk about, and that's out there in the reviews as well, is that th this film doesn't really add a great deal to the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. um, and from a story point of view, I think that's absolutely true, but I don't think it set out to do that. Um, I think what it set out to do was go really in depth into a part of, a really important part of, of, of the story and show how that happened and show us a completely different kind of Star Wars film that's ever been made before. From a visual point of view, um, from a stylistic point of view, it's so different than anything that's come before. It definitely carries on the themes of like family, which run through all of the Star Wars films. Um, but just great characters, um, loved some of the little references, which I'm going to be vague about in case people haven't seen the film, uh, the little references back to the original films. Um, I just loved it. I thought the third act of the film was probably the strongest part. Um, That's the bit when I was asleep as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like <laughs> probably my only criticism of it is that uh, Darth Vader is featured in the film, which I think you'll probably know if you've seen the trailer, but if not, spoilers. Um, and I felt like he he goes a little underused. But yeah, I thought the the new characters were really strong. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's really difficult. I don't I don't want to spoil anything. So My I don't want to talk favorite about it too much character yeah. was the robot. The robot was very good. K two S O I think his he name is. He was very dry, and I liked that when he was like, "I'll come with you." because he's told me I have to, <laughs> like, he was great. I do agree that I don't feel that it adds anything new to the Star Wars universe. It, it felt a little bit like it didn't need to be there. I'm not really going to be giving um, uh, like a rating for this film. I don't feel that I'm in the position right now to give it. I'm gonna give like, all. yeah, I'm gonna give a uh, kind of but it will change. Maybe in the next time that we do this review, I'll give you an update on what I think of Rogue One when we've watched it again. I felt like there was this special Star Wars club that was kind of like for the fans and for the people who know it really, really well. And I would consider myself to be a fan, not a diehard fan, but I don't have a huge knowledge of the universe. And I felt that a lot of the film was geared towards that audience. And I felt like I wanted to be involved but I wasn't, you know, mm. I felt like I was missing out on things because I didn't know everything about all of the individual characters. And that's literally just a personal perspective because no, people think, who know it very well yeah. obviously got all of the references and loved it. But so. I think that, again, it's a good comparison to mm. Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. There's loads of stuff in there that if you know a lot about Harry Potter, then you're going to understand and enjoy. Mm. But there's also lots that completely went over my head. Mm. Same for you. Yes. Again, it, like in, in Fantastic Beasts, ultimately the story there is some beasts get out in New York <laughs> and, they, and they get them back again. But there was a nipper. Yeah, and that, that story is <laughs> universally understandable, just like the story of a bunch of rebels stealing something mm -hmm. to stop something bad from happening mm -hmm. is universally understandable. But there are elements to each which you'll enjoy more if you know more about them. Yeah. So I'm hoping that on a second viewing, uh, Katie will feel slightly differently in the mm -hmm. same way that I did with Fantastic Beasts. I will, like I said, we will revisit this when think, we've watched it. Do you think we should talk time. about Jin? Okay, maybe not. Jin Erso is the female lead of this film, mm -hmm. and um, whilst I would say her character was perhaps a little underdeveloped, from what really I can. Underdeveloped. From what I can gather from just having watched the trailers and having seen the film, it does feel like her character has been edited and changed quite a lot. And I'm not sure if it was just different takes, but um, uh, she comes across as quite cold in the films, whereas she comes across a lot warmer in the trailers, weirdly, even just in the few bits of dialogue that you hear from her. But I just think, again, it's positive to have the lead of this film being a woman. Like, we're getting to a point where that is becoming a more normal thing. You know, to have I two agree. to have two Star Wars films, two of the biggest films that will come out in in the last two years, both you know having a cast led by women is such a positive thing. 
led by women is a bit of a stretch when you have one woman in a film that is 99% male. That's my, that was I another I thing that I struggled that. with. Um, yeah. And to be perfectly honest, coming after Ray, yeah, she really probably. didn't have much of an opportunity to be... I mean, Ray is, Ray is a very special character. I agree, it's great to see a leading lady in this kind of a franchise, which we haven't had because for, for a very long time, you know, with, with Leia and with um, Pad, Padme, mm -hmm. they're very... They're, they're the princesses, they're, the princesses. they're passive, yeah, they're not you know, the lead characters. I just think, regardless of her gender, her character is a weak character. She's just a bit undeveloped. She's, she's and a bit I, boring. From what I gather, that seems to have come from editing, um, yeah. but who knows. I'm very much pro, you know, women leads in films because we need it, definitely. <laughs> But if you're gonna make them boring, don't put them in there. You know, don't put don't put either a man or a woman in a lead if the lead is boring. And she she I think it's more underdeveloped than boring. There but, you go. But but yeah, I just they didn't give her anything to really stretch her her legs as an actress, and mm. I think she is an incredibly talented actress. Mm. Um, so it was disappointing. Mm. But yeah, what would you give Rogue One? Five. Five. Seriously! Five! I'm gonna give my tentative rating that will change. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Sorry. And I, I, it's, sorry. It's, it's tentative, that's why it's just, it's just poking up. <laughs> it's a tentative rating, it's not my official rating until I've actually... Seen the whole film. I think what I need to do <laughs> is I need to, you know, get up, have mm -hmm. a shower, have a nice full <laughs> breakfast. Yeah and you know, be ready to face the day, then watch Rogue One, <laughs> and then I'll give you my thoughts. But yeah, we will be returning to that one. I'm probably. gonna go and see it again today, and then I will go and see it again with you probably after Christmas. But yes, guys, <laughs> that's our film reviewing. Four films. Four films. Mm. And this is the last ever, well, not the last ever, this is my last episode before the Christmas special episode, which will be airing around Christmas time. Weird that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the next time we do a proper film review will be in 2017. Ooh, and there's loads of good new films coming out. Yeah, We've got we're a so massive excited. list, so there'll be more um, of these to come. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe down below. And um, obviously, if <laughs> somewhere, it's somewhere down there. Thank you very much for joining me again. Mm. I love my husband, he's so Ken. <laughs> he comes and talks about films with me. <laughs> but yeah, we hope you enjoy the lead up to Christmas, the last couple of days before Christmas. We're very excited about Christmas. Yay. This has been General Waffle. General Waffle. Are we going to finally do this sign off and do it properly? That was properly. All right. We love you all, guys. See you all soon. Say bye. 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 Happy knitting, happy movie watching, and we, we'll we, see you soon. Can we do the thing again? This has been General Waffle. <laughs> oh, but you can't kick the camera. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Enjoy the festive season, do some fun things, watch some good movies, do some crafty stuff, spend time with the people that you like. Get a dog. Quite like you. Get a dog. But not just for Christmas. Because dogs are for life. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs>